Hey, welcome back to Mr. PFs with Precal Unit uh, 4, Topic 3, Lesson Number 5, Systems of Polar Equations. Starting off with a review of what we did on the last video, this is going to be a convex, and I know it's convex because this A term is more than or twice as much as this B term. All right, so now the fact that it's sine tells me the convex, the big side is either going to be on top or bottom. It's always going to be along the y-axis for sine. The fact that it's plus tells me that the convex side is going to be on top, the larger side, that is. So 4 plus 2 makes 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, 4 going left and right. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 2 going down. So it looks like it's going to be like this. All right, so now we're going to get to system of equations. So system of polar equations is kind of like system of rectangular equations, which you should have done back in Algebra 1. So if r equals this for the first equation, r equals this for the second equation, now keep in mind, this is a cardioid graph, and I know that because a and b terms are the same. And this one's going to be a convex because I know 4 is more than twice as big as one. So where do these two graphs intersect? Now I'll do that on the next slide, but first I'm going to do this solving it algebraically. If r equals this and r equals this also, then I can substitute this, r equals this, I can take this and substitute it in for r right there. So basically I'm just saying these two are equal to each other. 3 minus 3 sine of theta equals 4 minus sine of theta. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I like to move the one that's the smallest. I always do that with algebra. It really doesn't matter how I go about doing this. I'm going to add 3 sine of thetas to both sides. Add 3 sine of theta here. All right, so that leaves me with 3 equals 4. So negative 1 plus 3 more makes 2 sine of thetas over here. Then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. It gives me negative 1 equals 2 sine of theta. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that gives me sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Now, uh, remember, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, but it's not positive 1 half. It's negative 1 half. All students take calculus, and sine is negative in these two quadrants. So that means it's going to be 30 degrees here and 30 degrees here, which is going to be 7 pi over 6, which is in the third quadrant, and then 11 pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant. So these are your two answers. Now, I can prove that those are the right two answers. 3 minus 3 sine of theta. So now, remember, that's a cardioid, so it's going to be... 3 away with sine, which means the big side is going to be on the y-axis because it's sine. It's 3 plus, so 1, 2, 3. So it is 3 on both sides of the x-axis. Um, 3 plus 3 makes 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, something like this. All right, I think that should have been a little more rounded. All right, it's pretty good. Um, let me do the next one, which was, this was going to be a convex, 4 minus sine of theta. So first of all, that's also going to be along the y-axis because it's sine. It's minus, which means the big side is going to be on the bottom. Uh, 4 plus 1 makes 5, so it's going to be right here. It's 4. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 minus 1 makes 3, so 1, 2, 3 up here. All right, so if I connect these, looks kind of like that. Now, I can prove my answer is what I, had, I said. Well, first of all, 7 pi over 6 is where the two graphs intersect here. I think I did a pretty darn good job there. Remember, I had to fix the heart out here. 11 pi over 6 is where the black heart meets the red. So that is the other answer out there. Those are the two angles in which... Now, I could also find the radius. I could solve that like I've been doing by using either one of the, the equations. It doesn't really matter which one because they both have the same radius at that same angle. All right. Um, now, I could go through these questions. I can show you how to do these, but these are going to have some tricks involved. So if you're going by the notes, I'm actually going to kind of skip these. This one actually has double angle involved. Uh, all you have to do is the same steps. 3 sine of theta equals square root of 3 cosine of theta. In fact, I am going to show the steps of solving this one, but I'm not going to show the graphs because 
This one actually ends up being, so this is 3 sine of theta. So if I'm going to graph that, that's a circle with a 3 that looks like this. And then square root of 3 cosine of theta is going to end up looking like this because square root of 3 is actually 1 point something. So it's going to look kind of like this. And then you can see that there's one answer right there and there's one answer at 0, 0. Uh, which is going to create the issue because you'll notice that the second answer does not show up on this graph. Uh, so let me just show how that would be done solving it algebraically. I prefer to divide both sides by cosine of theta. Uh, the reason why I'm going to do that is because if I divide both sides by sine of theta, I'm going to end up with cotangent, and I just tangent just works better with me. <laughs> so this is 3 times sine divided by cosine is tangent of theta, as I mentioned before. And this is just square root of 3 because these cancel out. Divide both sides by 3, and you got tangent of theta equals square root of 3 over 3. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, uh, this is going to have two different answers because all students take calculus. Uh, so tangent is both positive in the first and the fourth quadrant. And tangent of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 3. So this should have been 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, which is pretty close to where my graph Hit. But then you're probably wondering, well, where, what about 7 pi over 6? Because 7 pi over 6 should have also been an answer. And that's the problem, the fact that these are circles and they're both hitting on the origin. So the origin actually represents that other answer. Now for this question, you actually end up getting imaginary answers. Um, no, actually you don't. So I'm sorry, this is the double angle question. So 2 sine of double angle. So I guess it depends on how you do it. Um, so the first thing you would do is divide both sides by 2. You get 1 half, then sine of double angle. Now there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. You can just kind of look it up on, because we didn't memorize all the 1 fourths. Um, so you remember sine of double angle is the same thing as 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. I'm actually going to stop right there. There's multiple answers for this question. We didn't actually s solve questions like this. Um, so first, the r equals 1 is this, basically. And the 2 sine of double angle, so remember this is a rose, um, and it's going to have a 2 as the length of the petal. It's sine, which means it's naturally not going to start here. Believe it or not, this one's going to start at 45 degrees. It's a 2, which means you got to double that for the amount of petals, which means there's a petal here and here and here. So this is the reason why the graphs look like this. If you put it in a calculator, you'll see that it looks the same as what I'm making. And that's the way you can kind of check yourself since I couldn't check yourself algebraically. Now, how many solutions does this have? This has eight solutions because uh, all four of these petals are actually going to hit that center circle twice each. So it has a grand total of eight petals. Um, I'm going to check. Uh, okay, so we have these... Let me do one of these. I know that says homework, so for those of you that are doing this on the paper, I'll leave the rest of them to you to do. So for the first question, that's 3 equals 2 plus cosine of theta. First thing I would do is subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me 1 equals cosine of theta. Now remember, cosine is along the x-axis. When does the unit circle have 1? Here is the only place, because this will be negative 1. So the only theta, the only angle is 2 pi, or 0 degrees, basically. So there's only one answer to this question. Now, uh, let me prove that by graphing it. R equals 3, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So R equals 3 is a perfect circle. And R equals 2 plus cosine of theta, so uh, 2 is double 1. So this is actually a convex along the cosine. 2 plus 1 is 3, 1, 2, 3. I know I'm going right because it's plus and not minus. Uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, so that will be the other direction. And then 2 is this way, 2 is this way. All right, so convex going to look something like this. Now, the only place these two graphs hit each other was at the starting point, 2 pi. So that made sense. Both algebraically, we got the exact same answer as graphically. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to avoid that third question for right now, especially when we're going to get into imaginary questions in the next video. All right, thanks again for watching.